Hello, good afternoon. So I would like to invite our panelists here. So I'll start with uh, Veronique Dalli. Next one is Christina. And finally, I have John Carl. So, Celine and uh, John were meant to uh, join us as well, but unfortunately, um, uh, they were not available. Um, so, it's just going to be us. So, I suggest that we start. And I'd like to start with something quite recent um, uh, that uh, happened um, related to this topic. Um, a few uh, months ago, the, uh, the European Commission set up um, the EU Blockchain Observatory and Forum. And last week, this forum came up with a report. It has come up with quite a few reports already. But the one that was published er late last week, early this week, was in relation to electronic signatures. And uh, it's, it, 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 uh, it stated that there are serious doubts on whether a signature on the blockchain can qualify as an electronic signature in terms of the uh, EIDAS, which is the um, regulation in, in relation to identification, authentication, and trust services online. Um, what uh, are your thoughts, John? Thank you. Um, first of all, I would say that um, I wasn't surprised by the position taken, in the sense that um, the EIDAS, as other regulations, were not um, thought of and were not um, enacted, possibly with blockchain in mind. So when one reads through the provisions of these regulations, one has to struggle to determine whether the concept of blockchain and transactions carried out on blockchain technology fit within um, the ambit of, of the regulation. So in this case, we face a situation where whilst um, electronic transactions are regulated and whilst blockchain transactions would fall um, and qualify as valid electronic transactions, the actual signature itself uh, is it's being doubted whether it would have legal validity, unless there's the involvement of a TSP, a, a, a trust service provider, which of course makes the process quite cumbersome um, and ineffective, as the concept of the blockchain values, the, the, is The purposes of why precisely. blockchain was created. Exists in the first place. Um, I believe that this is indicative of the fact that if we are to embrace blockchain further, uh, legislators will have to look at uh, amending various uh, legislation. Um, we need to have a good look through what we are doing now and how the new technology fits in or otherwise. And I believe, however, that once blockchain is uh, embraced by the wider audience, by authorities, by governments, this will happen not automatically, but gradually. <coughs> Christina? Uh, thanks, Joe. Interesting question. I think the, the EU Blockchain Observatory Forum, in publishing that report, opened up a very interesting debate whether digital signatures um, on a blockchain can um, be denied legal force, basically. Um, there are a number of of points which would need to um, to look into. First of all, how do you confirm that um, the individual signing and the digital, digital signature is the actual person who owns a private key? And what proof do you have that that private key hasn't been tampered with or hasn't been fraudulently used? So uh, the, uh, another another point which comes to mind is how can you um, uh, prove that the digital signature of the parties equates to consent? 
Um, how can you confirm that the parties have um, both understood the language of the contract being written? Because ultimately, it's code, right? So what confirmation do we have that a digital signature does represent the will of the parties? So there are a lot of, it was open to a lot of, uh, lot of discussions, but just as the EIDS regulation states, the fact that a signature is done digitally should not deny the legal force of that, of that signature. So it should still bind the party to the contract. Now over here we have a bit of a different situation because we're looking at, con we're calling them contracts, but they're ultimately codes. So we need comfort in knowing that the parties signing the digital signatures are in fact the owners of the private keys to that contract. Um, so I think there are, there's still a lot of room for the bait, but it's, it's uh, very interesting to see how it's going to, what angle it's going to take. Okay. <clears throat> Veronique, um, the Prime Minister has recently announced that uh, soon all long-term rental contracts um, uh, will be registered on the blockchain. Is this a marketing ploy or a realistic endeavor that will bring tangible benefits to, 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 to this problem that we have in terms of rental contracts? Joe, um, we need to innovate. If we do not innovate, we might become irrelevant. So, if we need to make sure that in order to, for example, regulate or make sure that the rental market is functioning in a transparent manner, in a secure manner for both landlord and tenant, we need to embrace changes which make sure that the changes which are necessary are there and are being put in place. So what's this technology about? Blockchain basically is also about security because it's immutable and it's also about transparency. The, I'm sure there will be some reluctance for everyone to adopt, but I'm sure there are others who are willing to adopt this technology, and I'll explain why. Um, if we had to register, we keep on having the system of registration which we have in place now. I'm not saying that there's nothing wrong with it. I mean, it's, so far it has worked, it has served its purpose, it also has preserved history because there's a piece of history there in our archives, notarial archives, the archives which um, uh, also open a small window on our history. However, we have to make sure that we have a system in place which is easier for everyone to use. It, is, it should be more um, cost efficient in a way that it reduces costs. Also, it would be it would give more safeguard and peace of mind to the tenant to make sure that the money he is paying as rent, at least he has an idea who the real owner is. Why? Because we won't have like a system whereby you just register the rental contract and that's it. Ideally, it should be in place with a system whereby you have contracts which are already in place and placed on the blockchain contracts, which would be um, indicating title. So like that, you would, it would be easier for everyone. I'm on the internet, Christine on the internet, and John is on the internet. So we can check easily without going through the arduous process of um, asking for searches, which sometimes take weeks, sometimes you have um, uh, more complications, so you ask for a fast track and you have to pay for the fast track. So I think if you have the system in place, it is beneficial for everyone. It's not just the rental market. I think the rental market perhaps would be the first niche to be testing this, this uh, technology. However, if we had to look, for example, at Land Authority, they have a huge, massive database of contracts there. If these contracts are transferred onto the blockchain platform, that would be make it easier for everyone to know exactly who the owner is. If property is managed by blockchain, it would be easier. Like that, also, there was a period when there were some scams with the rental market. People would be um, asking for rent when they're not the rightful owners. But if you have the landlord and the tenant and the neutral third party who is validating this contract, that would be a good start for um, various niches and sectors of the profession to embrace blockchain. Will it happen overnight? No. Will it happen? Would it be the smoothest of operations? No, because it's a new thing, and every new change, every, every change, and every new 
um, system brings with it its, its challenges. However, if we adopt this technology in each and every sphere, we're speaking of signatures. Mm -hmm. So it can't be just signatures alone. It, have to be, it will have to be signatures, which is also um, uh, moving in some sort of um, balance with the registration of title. Um, which should be also implemented with the registration of rent, like that, for example, rather than going through copious amounts of paperwork to find and verify whether the site, typically a prospective buyer would ask a notary to carry searches. The notary asks the registry to provide these searches and then you have to go through paperwork. So like that, you would know exactly whether the property is burdened with a hypothec, whether it is, wh wh whether um, the balance has been paid or not, and it would be more cost effective. effective. Will it be the solution for everything? Definitely not. But um, for sure, it will be a transparent way whereby you will know exactly, even if there is a sublease, you would know exactly whether the sublessor was authorized to sublease that property or not. And the benefit of blockchain is because since it's a, it's a no open ledger, we know it can't be tempered. And that is the right amount of security, safety, and transparency that the consumer who will be adopting and using that technology would want. And I'm sure that once this project will be implemented, it will not be just restricted to the rental market, but it should also, I think, be um, transfer or also extend it to wherever there are deeds which are being uh, registered or archived. The court, for example, I mean, most of the times courts get this criticism, right or wrong, that it's, uh, their, their system of archives is very, 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 very archaic and records are kept non in the most efficient of ways. Unfortunately, <laughs> there are moments when those arguments are true. And using blockchain, we can start, no, it won't solve all the problems that we face in court. However, it could be the start of a good backup of what there is to date as records, as deeds, and we make sure that no document, no data is tampered with. Okay, fair enough. Any comments from your I, end? I definitely agree with Veronique's comments and also the fact that we're, um, we're trying and we're also achieving the innovative, um, we're being very innovative as an island and coming up with a blockchain, um, even from a regulatory framework and whatnot. The, the only one of the issues I see with having certain contracts registered on a blockchain is what consensus mechanism do you adopt with, with the users on the blockchain? So do you, uh, would you then expect to have every individual who has a contract registered on the blockchain to be a node in the network? Will they need to be involved in the consensus mechanism for um, approving um, a smart contract or validating a contract? Who will be running the nodes? Who will be running the nodes? So there are a lot of questions. So as, as um, productive and as innovative as it may seem. Um, I think there are um, a lot of other underlying issues which need to be tackled with and before we move on to, to um, adopting such a, you know, such a blockchain based, uh, based approach. I tend to agree. I believe that um, especially for judicial acts, there is a very big problem uh, in terms of documents that are being filed uh, in courts because the system is quite uh, old as well. The, 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 the processes are very old and they have never been changed. But um, uh, potentially even agreements, especially deeds, you mentioned notaries, um, mm -hmm. uh, Veronica, and that's uh, um, uh, public deeds are probably even more important. It's more important to register those than private rental agreements, but maybe given the situation we had, uh, with uh, the rental problems that the f especially foreigners living in Malta have faced, um, it might have been the right timing to actually um, come up with this solution. What's your view, John? For sure, it's an innovative idea. The way it's going to be implemented was so far not disclosed. So we're here uh, speculating how this could possibly work. I think we have to distinguish, first of all, between what is being said actually is registration of long-term rental agreements, which typically take uh, the form of a private writing. So in normal situations, those would be purely private agreements between the parties um, without requiring even the presence or uh, be, be them being published by a notary. 
so the contents thereof would be known only to the parties. Agreed. Of course, given the uh, situation you mentioned of the rental market presently, I believe that um, the, the, the government is trying to, as much as possible, control the situation, um, control abuse or possible abuse. We had in the, in the media and the news, um, we've heard that in certain situations, particularly rental agreements linked to certain schemes, yes. which are of course known to everyone, there was abuse by owners renting properties twice to different occupants, and these properties were actually um, void. There, there, there was no one living there, no. or the actual owner was living there himself. So <laughs> I can see the advantage of having a, a, a centralized or decentralized registration system for these contracts. Um, this could also help the authorities from a tax point of view, from a tax collection point of view. Mm -hmm. So most of these contracts, of course, would give rise to um, an obligation on part of the owner to pay tax, um, an obligation on part of the owner to collect a VAT, uh, an obligation on part of the tenant to pay that VAT. If these agreements are purely private, no one would even know of their existence, let alone how much tax is being paid. So I see the, all these advantages of having these, these uh, private writings becoming somewhat public. Mm -hmm. My concern is actually this, this last bit of these contracts becoming to a certain degree of a public nature. I see concerns there of confidentiality, privacy issues, issues uh, of GDPR, especially if we're using a blockchain, question of where the nodes are, um, who's a data controller, um, jurisdiction over that particular individual's abusing of that data, so on and so forth. So it comes with its complications. Um, now, of course, one could look at the possibility of starting off with something which is less complex, mm -hmm. less exotic than using a blockchain straight away for a new process which has never been used before other than for public deeds and perhaps use a centralized, although that sounds strange in the topic we're discussing today, system whereby these contracts are registered with a central authority, with a, with a public authority um, um, for, their, um, for, for, their, for their review of those contracts, for record keeping and for the other reasons which I mentioned. But the content thereof would be um, still private and uh, the, vi the, the viewing rights, so to speak, would be only of the parties and of the author itself. This worked perfectly, I think, in the past and still works when um, a system of registration of promise of sales was introduced. Um, so I believe that we can achieve as much with something which is maybe more congruent with the present acceptance of technology, of authorities, and also let's also speak about the uh, professionals involved, being it lawyers and perhaps even more notaries, mm -hmm. who are maybe a bit ah, more yeah. traditional yeah, in that, approach. That, that is also one of the problems, in fact. Um, uh, how many of the, these notaries would be able to um, uh, actually act as oracles on a blockchain? Mm -hmm. um, uh, especially since in Malta we have a lot of practitioners that are sole practitioners. Yes, but without a whole setup there behind was them. this um, impression, I would say wrong impression, or, or scaremongering that uh, um, the, notar the notarial profession would be done away with. Mm -hmm. And I think it was a bit far-fetched and it was stretched beyond any sort of imagination because at the end of the day, there would still need for interface, there would still be the need for um, drafting, there was, it's, not, it's, it's not like it's going to happen, it's got, we're just moving to a robotic system overnight and we're going to do, to do away with the professions that have been in place and being the key players in the industry for, I mean, centuries and centuries on end. So it's, it's, it won't be like that. Also, I mean, at the end of the day, we'll have to make sure that we still have a job and we will embrace this technology in order to help what we do and enhance what, and, and optimize our time. So, so um, we can give more added value rather than 
Yes, we waste time on processes. Optimize what we do so far. Very, and I, I'm going to stop you because I'd like to ask you. Um, Jean earlier mentioned something that is interesting that, okay, we can use centralized systems maybe instead of blockchain. Um, I, and, and you earlier mentioned the advantages, some of the advantages of blockchain. I'm seeing the tendency sometimes of uh, um, uh, th th there's a move towards picking and choosing certain parts of the blockchain. It's like an a la carte menu. Okay, this I like, this I don't like. This is public, no, private, yes. Um, uh, with, we mentioned the issue uh, of the nodes. Mm -hmm. Ultimately, the security of the blockchain depends on how decentralized the nodes are, because if the nodes are all held by the government, the security is not there. We still have to trust completely the government and the government department holding those nodes. So, uh, what do you do? You believe that we can still make use of bits and pieces of blockchain technology rather than actually making use of the full power of the public blockchain, which is the real blockchain, let's say, the, f the fully-fledged blockchain? Um, or do you still believe that we can use bits and pieces and um, uh, still obtain a, a more satisfactory result than we would be obtained through a centralized system like the one in relation to the promises of sale? That was I already think implemented. we would be able to answer that question in a year's time or two years' time <laughs> once <laughs> the application would have been used by the users and the consumers. Because only, uh, the, I think it is the users of the technology who, who are the ones who will dictate how this will unfold. I'm sure there will be, um, okay, ideally the technology is presented, but the adoption and usage and consumption by the consumer will be be the contributing factors which will determine the way it will eventually unfold. Because mm -hmm. it's the consumer which dictates the way it's going to happen. Um, for example, if we had to take, speaking of rental markets, one of the challenges would be uh, I mean, that there is, there, are, there, there is right now is the tenant trying to claim, the, to reclaim the security deposit that is initially paid to the landlord. Sometimes there are disputes which end up in court, etc. This could be a solution. It won't be the solution for everything, but an aspect of this technology could be a solution whereby that, that, that security deposit is, because um, blockchain is not a technology which functions in a disconnected way. If it is, okay, let's say contact connected to a financial institution, you would have this arrangement whereby you have the landlord, the tenant, and a neutral, so to speak, third party who will validate or sign off, so to speak, um, the payment. You don't, it's not like you have to encash the payment. So I'm not I saying that- I have that to stop you because we have just one minute. <laughs> so I'm going for a short uh, Thanks, comment from Christine nice and a short you. comment from- I think John. as a concluding um, to, to this topic is, the question we need to ask is, do you need to have that contract registered on a blockchain? Will it facilitate the decentralization and trustless um, part of the transaction? If yes, then, I mean, I think we, sh we could go for the blockchain. And just to, to answer or to go back to your, your concern on the obviously sensitivity nature behind the lease agreements being registered on a blockchain, we can also make use of the private permission blockchains. So there are situations to cater for, for the sensitivity of uh, the information in a contract. Um, so I think that is the main question we need to ask. I'll just Jean? move on to Jean. Very short and sweet. <laughs> Are we ready for the change? Is our legal system prepared for the change? If the legal system is not prepared for the change, irrespective of how much we dream about it, blockchain will be used and utilized in a, a piecemeal fashion. <laughs> Once this technology is embraced further, as I mentioned earlier, I'm sure there will be, be a movement to amend and adopt and, and, and improve our legislation for that purpose. Very good. Right on time. <laughs> so thank you very much. Um, it was a pleasure having you here. And uh, thank you, we'll uh, go for the next panel. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thanks.